Yesterday, there was a huge rally for Palestine here in Winnipeg. This was easily among the largest protests I've ever seen in this city, which has had many, especially in recent years and months. Meanwhile, the pro-Israel, pro-genocide crowd was like 10 or 15 strong. There was also, across the street, a no space for hate rally to protest the transphobic, hate-driven parental rights movement and their efforts to ban queer books. Although many queer people, such as myself, unequivocally support Palestine and want an end to the genocide and apartheid being perpetrated by Israel, several of our queer nonprofits here in Winnipeg, like Rainbow Resource Center and Pride Winnipeg, have, like so many of our leaders, been appallingly silent about the genocide in Gaza during this time when it is crucial for all of us to speak up. At least one of the speakers at the No Space for Hate rally did speak briefly in support of Palestine. Queers for Palestine Winnipeg was handing out these pamphlets arguing against queer silence and complicity on Palestine and discussing the parallels and connections between queer liberation and Palestinian liberation. They're not the first to observe that all liberation movements are connected just as all oppression is. I agree wholeheartedly with what they write at the end, that we queer folks must undermine Israel's attempts to pinkwash its crimes through cynical deployment of queer rights, as if Israeli oppression of Palestinians doesn't also harm queer Palestinians. It's absurd to say that Palestinians must perfectly renounce queer phobia before we agree that they have a right to exist and live freely on their ancestral lands. I think this Western liberal accusation of queer phobia in Palestine and impulse to condemn Hamas are rooted in this very white, colonial idea that liberation movements must be pure, nonviolent, orderly, calm, and not disruptive, despite all evidence to the contrary about what revolution truly looks like. This idea is baked into how imperialist countries like the U.S. whitewash and sanitize the lives and work of civil rights leaders like MLK and Nelson Mandela by emphasizing nonviolent protest as the only legitimate liberation tactic. Nelson Mandela, like so many black civil rights leaders, also unequivocally supported Palestine and saw deep connections between black liberation and Palestinian liberation. This is why I find it ridiculous when people comment asking what this has to do with urban design, as if urban design isn't informed by the same racist, capitalist colonial ideology at play in oppression and genocide of Palestinians by Israel, the US, and Canada. As if urban design isn't also a deeply political topic that requires a decolonial, anti-racist approach. So let me just take this moment to call on everyone in the urbanist and queer communities, and everyone who truly believes in liberation, to speak out in support of Palestine, and against Israeli apartheid, occupation, and genocide. None of us are free until we're all free.